Leroy's Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver Walkthrough Part 22. Guess who it is? It's our rival, Mr. Ginger Boy. Yeah, and he comes out of the gym right when you walk into the city, and he's like, "What's up? You again?" And he's like, "I ain't bothering with wimps like you. Like this guy still is calling me a wimp after I've beaten him like what three times in a row now." But yeah, he's like, "Yeah, the gym leader's not there, so you might want to go to the lighthouse and train up a bit." Um, but yeah, the gym leader is actually missing from the gym right now, so going in there would be a waste of your time. So you're going to have to do some other stuff to get her back in the gym. We'll talk about all that in a bit, and we'll check out all of Olivine City. Um, but first, let's go to the Pokemon Center, because we got to heal up, and there's actually something we can do in there. So let's get to it. Alright, I'm all healed up. Now, this is kind of interesting. You would not expect to have a Pokemon battle in the Pokemon Center, but if you talk to this girl right here... Um, she wants to show off her little ball capsules. So, um, she w yeah, yeah, like, the amazing decorations, the ball capsules. So you can battle her right here in the middle of the Pokemon Center. And check this out, she sends out a Bell Awesome, and like, all oh, those little, you know, cool shapes pop up. Um, and that's basically what those are. Um, so, yeah, just a cool little thing there. And then you can take out the Bell Awesome, which isn't really that hard, but you get a lot of experience points for it. But most people never fight this battle because they have no idea that there's actually a trainer in the Pokemon Center, but just a cool little thing to check out there. Um, so yeah. And she's ta talking about ball capsules. I'm not really going to do that, though, just because I don't want to have to go get all the stuff for it, but I don't know. Maybe if I it, stop being so lazy, one day I'll do it. Anyways, go to the house right above the Pokemon Center. This is one thing you'll definitely want to do. You can talk to this guy, and he will give you the good rod. Um, all you have to do is say yes to his question, and you get the good rod. Now, the good rod is a step up from the old rod, which is a piece of crap. This thing will actually get you some good Pokemon. Um, you can catch some legit water types. So if you don't have a water type on your team, now might be a good time to start thinking about a water type. And I always recommend catching a water type, because you'll need something to use, like Surf or Waterfall or whatever it is. And water is like one of the basic types, so it's always good to have a water type, but... Um, it's a good time to start thinking about that, because you can start fishing and surfing around here. Um, anyways, what am I doing in this house anyways? No one even here, no one in here can even give me items right now, but if you have the seal case, which you get from healing up those mill tanks just north of Olivine, um, the girl in there will give you seals for your seal case, which you can use for ball capsules. Now, right over here is a dude that kind of looks like a fisherman, but really he just wants to trade for, um, a Krabby. So if you have a Krabby, he will give you a Voltorb in return. Now, you can actually catch Krabbies right next to Olivine City, so I'll just show you that right now, because believe it or not, I actually kind of want to catch a Krabby. Now, not for my team. I'm not going to use a Krabby on my actual team, like a lot of people thought, but I need a Pokemon to teach Surf to, along with some other HMs, and I always thought Krabby made a very good um, HM Pokemon, so over here in Route 40, you can use the Good Rod that we just got, and um, if you're lucky, you'll find a Krabby right away. Fishing is really easy. Just go to your key items, use the good rod, you'll see a little exclamation point pop up, then just click A, and then you have your Pokemon. Um, so then you just go into the battle. And there we got a Krabby. So Krabby is definitely a good HM Pokemon. Like I said, it can get Cut, it can get Strength, Rock Smash, Surf, Dive, all this good stuff. Um, so I'm going to weaken it down. Slowly, slowly but surely we'll weaken it down. And then try to catch it. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to use Krabby on my actual team, like I said, but I would definitely recommend Krabby. It's a pretty good Pokemon. It has really high physical attack. Um, usually water types are more on the, you know, end for special attacks, but this one's a good physical attacker, so... Um, that's my opinion on Krabby. And let's go ahead and use our Ultra Ball. I could use Pokeballs, but I just want to make sure I catch it. And there we go. So like I said, Krabby not going to be on my actual team, it's just going to be here for HMs. Which unfortunately means he will be replacing our Rattata. So yeah, like I said, Krabby can learn a bunch of HMs. Right now I have Cut, Surf, and Rock Smash on him. Um, and I need a Pokemon to use Surf because I don't have a Water type yet. So that's what we're going to do right now because there's actually a cool hidden item you can catch right over here. Um, I didn't do anything crazy, we're still here in Olivine City. Um, you can use Surf right here in the water, and there's an item you can get to. So yeah, um, let's see here. Let's spray some repels. 
Now, um, the really nice thing about catching water types at this point in the game, like I was talking about earlier, is that you already have the HM for Surf, so if you catch any water type, you can immediately get a really good attack on it. This is one of the spots I would definitely recommend getting a water type. Like, I've been talking about that a lot. And if these wild Pokemon would stop interrupting me, I could finish, but... Anyways, there's TM57 Charge Beam. Pretty good Electro-type move, has a 70% chance of boosting up your special attack. Um, anyways, let's head back down here through the water. Back to Olivine. And there we go. So, I guess we've done everything in the houses. Now all there is to do is go to the lighthouse. Um, which is obviously what our ri rival was talking about earlier. Um, but back to my little spiel on water types. Yeah, like I said, you can get the good rod now. You can start to surf in the water. So you can go down south and find a lot more water type Pokemon. Just definitely a good spot in the game to catch a water type. Anyways, this guy's going to fight you. Yeah, in the lighthouse, you're basically going to work your way up to the very top and fight trainers along the way. Really nice training spot. A lot of trainers in here. Definitely a good place to level up your Pokemon. So we can fight this Noctowl. And I'm mainly going to be training up Heracross in here. Anyways, Noctowl is a pretty good Pokemon. It can use Hypnosis and Confusion. Even though it's not a Psychic type, it still can use Confusion. Um, but of course, Heracross can still take care of it. Noctowl was always one of my favorite Pokemon to use back in the days of Gold and Silver. I always caught a Hoot Hoot. Because I was like, <laughs> I always used Pidgey in Red and Blue. Like, I always used a Pidgey. So I was tired of Pidgey by the time Gold and Silver came out. And I always wanted the Flying type, so I always just caught Hoot Hoot. And here's an old guy asking for our phone number. Let's say no. And I love what he says. He's like, as to be expected, children prefer to spend time with people their own age. Like, seriously, you're like a 50-year-old man asking for my number. Maybe even 60 years old. Get your own friends. Um, yeah, here's a Sailor. Sailor Huey. Anyways, I've always loved the lighthouse. It just... I don't know. I think it's a cool idea having a lighthouse in a Pokemon game. I don't know why people just hang out in the lighthouse with their Pokemon. Like, I mean, you go in a lighthouse, you don't just expect to see a bunch of people, like, hanging out. Like, hey, wanna fight Pokemon? <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Lighthouses are actually really cool if you've seen them in real life. They're definitely not like this, though. <laughs> not like the one in the Pokemon games. Um, but lighthouses are always pretty cool. It reminds me of that movie, um... I don't know if you guys saw it. What's it called? The one with, uh... Leonardo DiCaprio. It's... Oh my god, this is killing me. Shutter Island! That's what it's called. Yeah, that creepy movie where they're stranded on that island and there's, like, that creepy lighthouse where... All that crazy stuff's going on. <laughs> Yeah, if you've seen that movie, it's like, these are two completely different lighthouses. Like, fun lighthouse, where we have Pokemon matches, and creepy lighthouse, where they do experiments on the brain. <laughs> Anyways, another guy asking for our phone number. Like, honestly, w what is the deal here? I should just start telling people I don't have a phone. Like, no, get away from me, I don't have a phone. I'm only 10 years old, do you think 10-year-olds have cell phones? <laughs> and the funny thing is that nowadays, probably most 10-year-olds do have cell phones. Like, cell phones started out with just adults, and it, like, slowly has moved down. And then, like, high schoolers had them, and middle schoolers had them. Now, everyone has a cell phone. And, um, yeah, probably by the time, like, we're, all of us are, like, 30 years old, like, babies are gonna have cell phones. Like, you'll, you'll see, like, ladies pushing their babies in the stroller, and they'll just be, like, texting their other baby friends. <laughs> Talking about, like, oh, did you see that episode of Barney last night? Yeah, that was good. And there'll just be little babies texting. That's what's gonna happen. Anyways, we got another Pidgey. Yeah, this guy has all bird-type Pokemon. Oh, I keep saying bird-type Pokemon. They're, f they're flying-type Pokemon, but they're birds. That's why I get it mixed up, but... Yeah, I'm gonna go to Geodude to take care of them. Bird-type Pokemon? What is my problem? Why am I calling them bird-type Pokemon? They're obviously flying-type Pokemon. Whatever. I'm weird. <laughs> I don't know. I don't call water-types, like, fish-types. <laughs> but whatever. Um, anyways, yeah, now we're just gonna roll out our way to victory. And Rocky's up to level 23. Two more levels till Geodude evolves. And I cannot wait to get a Gravelor, because Gravelor is awesome. Um, and yeah, the nice thing about Rollout, it just keeps adding power each turn. Just more and more power each time. Not that it matters, it's going to kill the Pidgeys either way, but it's still kind of fun. And yeah, like I mentioned before, um, Geodude's at level 23. So two levels away from evolution. Now the really nice thing about um, Geodude is that when he evolves into Gravelor, all you have to do is trade to evolve it into a Golem. And the cool thing is, you can just go from a Geodude to a Golem instantly. Like, you can just evolve it um, into a Golem again. You don't need to level it up. You, right when you get Graveler, you can just trade it and evolve. 
so I can really just I can have a golem in a couple levels. But I think what I'm gonna do is just because um, I usually do this when I have like when I use a ghastly or a geodude or something. I'm probably gonna use graveler for a bit. Um, just so I can, you know, experience all three stages of the evolution. I don't know why, just because I kind of want to use Graveler for a bit, just because I think it's a cool Pokemon. But then I'll have all that into Golem. I'll probably just keep Graveler for, for a few levels, just so I can say I actually had a Graveler on my team, but... Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, a lot of people get the idea that if you don't evolve it right away, its stats aren't going to be as good, but in reality, um, that has nothing to do with it. Whether you evolve it into a golem at level 25 or you wait till level 100, it's going to have the exact same stats, so don't worry about that. Anyways, I'm somehow managing to multitask. I've gotten good at, like, picking items and talking about completely different things. And I'm proud of myself for that. Um, anyways, yeah, I just healed up my hair cross, basically. And let's go fight this girl over here. Um, talking about Jasmine the Gym Leader. Yeah, the Jasmine the Gym Leader is missing from the gym, but people are talking about her in the lighthouse. Interesting, because our rival told us to come to the lighthouse after leaving the gym. Could there somehow be a connection here? Could the gym leader possibly be at the top of the lighthouse? Nah, that'd be crazy. That wouldn't make any sense at all. Um, anyways, let's take care of this Meryl. Yeah, Heracross is just dominating everything in here. Like, just destroying everything. Um, and that was a really easy battle. Anyways, let's grab this item. And it's TM87 Swagger. This move I despise. Like, when people use Swagger on me, it is the most annoying thing in the world. Like, the most annoying thing in the world. But, basically, it confuses your opponent and raises their attack. Seems kind of weird, but the whole point is their attack gets boosted, so when they hit themselves in confusion, it does more damage to them. So, kind of a strategic move. Anyways, here's Growlithe. Um, oh, of course it's going to intimidate us, so... Probably can't one-hit KO it. But we can still try with a Brick Break. Growlithe is a really cool Pokemon. Too bad you can only use Growlithe and Heart Gold. Because I remember I had Silver version, and I always wanted a Growlithe, but I was like, no, I can only get it in Gold. And are you seriously using a full restore? Who do you think? You think you're some kind of gym leader or something? Like, let's be honest here. Regular trainers are not allowed to have full restores. Everyone knows only I can use potions, and gym leaders can have, like, one or two. And I'll still get angry if they use them. Anyways, another Growlithe. Yeah, Growlithe is an awesome Pokemon. Arcanine is one of my all-time favorites. Like, here's the thing. A lot of people ask me, like, what's my favorite Pokemon? I honestly don't have a favorite Pokemon. I can't pick one as my favorite, but Arcanine is up there. And some people call it Arcanine, but I always call called it Arcanine, so Arcanine just sounds weird to me. If you guys have watched my videos in the past, you know that, in particular, um, first-gen Pokemon, I'm way mixed up with unnamed. Anyways, you guys are probably wondering, where do I go next? There's no ladder. What could I possibly do? Well, check this out. You go out the window! Isn't that awesome? You jump out the window, and check this out. This is, like, the coolest part of this entire game. You get this, like, awesome... I don't even, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just, like, a visual masterpiece. I'll, that's what I'll say. It just It's visually appealing. It's just, like, you see the clouds in the background... Everything just looks awesome, like you're on the lighthouse, it's just like, yes, just take in this moment, because it's great. Like, this is some, this is just, like, when you look back to Red and Blue, then you look at this, it's just like, oh my god, these games have come a long ways. Um, and Dim's having a good time, too, so that's good. Anyways, let's head back in, and this is how you keep moving along. You come back in here and fight some more trainers. Anyways, I feel like there might have been something I was talking about right before I jumped out the window, but I've completely lost track of it. Oh yeah, I was talking about first-generation Pokemon. And the reason for that is um, because I played those games when I was like five years old, so I had my own ways of pronouncing everything. And once that gets stuck in your head, you have a hard time like getting rid of it, you know? So, Excuse me for mispronouncing so many names. But I do know how to say Krabby, and I do know how to say Heracross, so at least I have that going for me. And do you know how to pronounce Bubble Beam? Like, at least I'm not pronouncing everything completely wrong. At least I get some stuff right. I mean, at least I at least know that it's Pokemon and not, like, Pookie Man or something like that. I don't know. And Dim is up to level 23. I actually think every single one of my Pokemon is at level 23 right now. And that is definitely the way to go. The best way to train is to have everyone at a steady level. I mean, if on your team you've got, you know, four, five, six Pokemon, all at a pretty decent level around the same area, then you're probably doing a pretty good job. If you're only training, like, one or two Pokemon, they're probably going to be, like, level 70 by the end of the game, but... I don't know, whatever your preference is. I always liked using more Pokemon, just because... 
I like having, you know, the more, the less Pokemon you have, the higher level they'll be at, because your experience is more, you know, centered around those few Pokemon. But the more you have, the more types you have, the more moves you have, you're just likely to match up against, you know, Elite Four members better and stuff, so. Everyone has their own preference. Mine is just to use as many Pokemon as I possibly can, and possibly like an HM Slave. Anyways, we got some more trainers to fight. Looks like another bird type trainer. Flying type trainer, not a you're a bird keeper, but you okay, I need to stop I need to stop at the whole bird type thing because it's just getting out of hand now. <laughs> like I've done it twice in this video and I did it in like a couple videos ago. It just needs to stop. They are flying type Pokemon and not bird type Pokemon. Uh let's see here. Let's you know what, let's go ahead and switch to Geodude. Yeah, especially since you're going to Pharaoh. The last thing I want to do is get hit with like an aerial ace and get knocked out. Just because I don't want to go all the way back down to heal or anything, so. Rocky's the way to go, and let's go with a rollout on this thing. Pharaoh at level 20. Yeah, Sparrow evolves into Pharaoh level 20. Pretty early evolution for a good flying type. Dang it, I missed! Um, but yeah, one thing that's always kind of funny is that um, in Red and Blue version, I've noticed that most people that play always catch a flying type Pokemon. And it's, it's like... There's, there's two types. There's the Pidgey people and there's the Sparrow people. There's the people that always pick Pidgey, and they love Pidgeotto. Then there's the people that are, like, all for Sparrow and Pharaoh. Um, I have to say, when I was younger, I was always the Pidgey guy. I always used Pidgeotto and Pidgeot. I don't know why, but I just preferred those three. Well, those three as in, you know, Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot. I don't know why, though. Pharaoh's still a cool, cool Pokemon, though. Sparrow just kind of sucks. <laughs> it's going to get knocked out in one hit. I'm just kidding. Sparrow's pretty good, too. You can get Sparrow really early on in this game, too, so... Definitely not a bad flying type. Typically, flying types at the beginning of the game are usually pretty good for your team. One thing I've noticed, though, is that the... You know, I don't have all the names memorized for the black and white Pokemon, just because at the time of this recording, it's a pretty brand new game, but... The flying Pokemon you get at the beginning of black and white really does not learn that many good moves, I've noticed, which is kind of disappointing. Um... Anyways, looks like we have two more sailors to fight until we get to the top of this place. And it's looking like this is going to be another 20 minute video, which is fine, I guess. Yeah, a lot of people think I'm a YouTube partner because I'm putting up like 15, 20 minute videos, but um, what happened is YouTube just increased the time limit, so you're not limited to 10 minutes anymore. You can just go as long as you want. I don't know if that's the case for everybody or just people with X amount of subscribers, but... Um, I can make videos as long as I want now, and so can most other LP, every other LP, I guess. I don't know anyone that doesn't have that access, but I don't know. Which is definitely nice. It's great for Let's Players and walkthrough people like myself. Just because we can jam all the stuff into one long video instead of, you know, splitting it up. Um, one more trainer to fight. I have to say, this is like... <laughs> This whole video has just been me talking about random stuff and just somehow fighting trainers at the same time. I'm definitely impressed with myself for my, uh, like, multitasking skills. Anyways, we got Sailor, Sailor Roberto. <laughs> that reminds me of a funny Mexican joke. It's, what do you call a Mexican with a rubber toe? Roberto! Oh, it's funny because it's not offensive, so I'm allowed to say it on YouTube without Mexicans getting angry at me. <laughs> um, anyways, Polly Whirl. Let's go ahead and switch to, uh, Herbie here. Just because I kind of want to spread the love around a bit. Dim's pretty much taken on this whole lighthouse by himself. And let's take you out with a magical leaf. Ah, double slap. It's funny because slapping always seems like a thing girls do, yet this is a male polyworld slapping. Be a man and give me a punch to the face. Come on, don't just slap me. Anyways, magic leaf should knock you out. I guess that's why Poliwhirl evolves, like, all he can do is double slap, then he evolves into Poliwrath, and then he just has, like, dynamic punch. And much You know what? Let's go to, um, Batman, just because I might as well let every Pokemon fight at least once in this video. So here we go, Batman. And I'm hoping that Batman evolves into Crobat soon. Crobat is just awesome, I can't wait. And Wing Attack should take you out, no problem. Bam, there we go. And a critical hit. That's nice. That probably would have killed him like five times over, too. There we go. Sailor Roberto. The Mexican with the rubber toe. Roberto. Anyways, here's one item we can grab. And it's a super repel, which is always nice. And let's head up the ladder. And now we are at the top. 
And guess who it is? It's Jasmine, the gym leader, with her Ampharos. Even though she's not an Electric-type gym leader, that always confused me, but... She says her Ampharos is very sick, so she's up here taking care of it in the lighthouse. So what she wants you to do is, um... Well, first off, she's gonna open this so you can get out to the elevator, but... She wants you to go to Cyanwood City to get some medicine for her. She doesn't specifically tell you where to go, but you need to go to Cyanwood City to get this medicine. And, um, there's a super potion, by the way. And until you do that, you cannot take on the gym leader, so... Um, it's actually kind of a trick. This isn't the fifth gym. We have four gym badges. This isn't the fifth gym. This is the sixth gym leader. So we have to go to another city, take on the fifth gym leader, bring back the medicine, then we can take on the sixth gym leader, and then we'll proceed on with the game. So it's kind of confusing. But once this elevator brings you to the bottom, you are officially done with the lighthouse, so congratulations. Takes a long time to do. Um, but we're done with it, and next time we'll head towards Signwood City to the next gym leader. See you all next time.